In this video, I'll show you how to create a roof plan in AutoCAD. Roof plans show us information related to the roof structure and also usually shows the outline of the floor plan that it's covering. It also mentions the slope of the roof. We're going to go over all of that and we're going to use a few commands such as the polyline, the trim, the offset, and the hatch command. My name is Jay and I'm the founder of JCAD. I make AutoCAD tutorials on YouTube and I focus on AutoCAD for Mac. Let's get into it. So for our reference, I'm using a floor plan that I created before in a different tutorial, and I'll leave you the link in the top so you can check that one out if you'd like. But anyway, once you have your floor plan ready, we're going to basically start by drawing an outline. So I will do the polyline command, and then from here, I will actually draw like this. Okay, so it's just a perimeter, essentially a line, like around the outline of your project. And then once I have that, I'm going to move it to the outside. Okay, so this is essentially the perimeter of the building. Now, obviously, we have a post here on the bottom. It's better to actually show this one as well. So I'll just do a line around it, and then I'll move from this corner all the way to this corner. So these, I like to place them on the hidden layer to represent that they are actually under the roof outline. And then for the roof itself, I don't have a roof layer specifically here. But for example, I will just use the walls layer because this one is thick. Um, and I just like to, I want to show you the line weight essentially. So so I switched to that. So now I'm going to do the, the roof itself. So what I will do is I will do a rectangle and then click from here to here. And then what I will use is the offset command because usually the roofs are offset from the building. Um, at least in California, the standard is usually like one foot, 18 inches or two feet. Of course, there's more like there's more custom situations. But anyway, for our purpose, we will go with 12 inches or one foot. So I will offset this to the outside and then the original line that was just a reference. I will delete that. The next thing I will do here, if I'm trying to do a gabled roof, all I need to do at this point is draw a line from the middle here to the midpoint here, and now we have this. The next thing I will add is the hatch. So let me start the hatch command and I will type H. And then from here, we will get this window on the top. Now there are multiple hatch patterns. The one we're gonna use actually, I will show you two specific hatches that that are usually like the standard for, for the roofs, but also it depends on the material you're using. Uh, but for drafting purposes, we're just going to show two of them. So what I will do here is if you click on this selector right here, you will get this window of hatches, gradient solids, and then user defined. So I'm going to go with the ones that actually come with the software. And then from hatches, I will slide down here and I will find the one that I want to use. And it should be on the bottom, on the top. So it's this one right here, uh, the one that says uh, AR and then roof. So I'll select this one. And then the way the hatch command works is that you need to fill in the area so that way the hatch shows up. And this is how we can do this. The other way I like to do it is to actually select the hatch uh, command. And rather than filling in the areas, I will actually do this option, select boundary, and then I will just select the outer boundary, okay? And then I'll finish the command. Now you're gonna notice like first the color for this. So I'll talk about that and then we will talk about the scale of the hatch. So for this, for the hatch, I do have a dedicated layer for that. And by the way, I did a list of layers. You can also get that for free. I'll leave you the download link in the description. But anyway, I will be switching to a layer that I made specifically for the hatch, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna cover is basically the scale of this. So as you can see, it, it looks too busy and we can't really see how the pattern looks like. So what I will do is select it, and then from the same window here on the top, there's actually a scale factor here. So I will switch this one to, for example, 10 and hit return. So now we can clearly see this pattern, and this is how it looks like. So you can use this one, but I think the more common one is the next hatch, is the next hatch I wanna show you. Let me switch to that one. We will go back to our window, and then we will slide down, and then we will choose this one right here. Now this one, the size of it for 10, for a scale of 10, uh, is not gonna work. So we will bring it back to 10, to one, I'm sorry. And then, so now this looks kinda good. I like it rotated, so I will apply the rotation here. I will do 90 degrees and then hit return. And now I have essentially this. 
The next thing I like to do on the roof is basically adding the, the slope arrows. And to do that, I'm gonna use one that I created before. So I did this collection. I will put you a download link for this one. And then I made different sizes. So that way, depending on the scale of the drawing, you could use the one that fits best. Now for my purpose, I like to show the roof plan. If I'm just showing it on as a roof plan, I will use this one for the quarter scale. But if I'm working on a site plan and I wanna show the roof as well on the site plan, then I will most likely go with the one eighth scale, which is the bigger one. For now, we will just copy this one. I'll select it and copy it, and then I'll bring it here. I'll just rotate it so that way it's matching the roof slope like this. And then essentially I will mirror it. I'll use the mirror command from the middle to the other side, and then I don't wanna erase, so I'll say no. And we have this so far. The last thing we're gonna add is essentially the text. So now we're gonna do like this, and then we're gonna type slope is quarter or not quarter what i want to say is 4 to 12 okay so now that i have this text i'll switch it also to its own layer i will put it on the text layer and then i'll put this here and then i can copy or mirror this text the mirroring might not work so i'll just do the copying and then for these ones for their layer i don't have a dedicated layer for them so maybe for now i'll just put them on the text layer and serve like an as an annotation layer so I just showed you how to do a gabled roof. What if we want to do a hip roof similar to this one? So it's essentially the same process, uh, exactly everything the same, but I will just show you, I'll just copy this for our reference so we don't have to draw everything from scratch. I'll take out the hatch so that way it's not in the way. Or actually let's leave it and let's actually do something where we just hide it. So you can isolate it and we're gonna do the hide objects. Okay, so this is hidden. And now I'm gonna do a polyline from the corner and then I'm gonna go up in 45 degrees. Now, in case you don't have the 45 degrees, all you need to do is to make sure from the bottom, you have this setting enabled and you have it at 45. I believe it's called polar tracking. Yep, it's polar tracking. So we will activate that, make sure it's active and then set it at 45 degrees. And then you will come up here like this and then go down. And then for this line, we will trim it or you can also uh, slide it and make it shorter. And then from here, we will just essentially mirror this, and then we will shorten this line like this by moving the vortex. And now we have a hip proof. What I will, all, what I will also do is to actually rotate this by 90 degrees, or actually let's just copy it first, and then I'll rotate it like this. And then we will rotate using the rotate command. I'll click from the middle, and then I will mirror this from the middle point to the other side, and then I will copy the text. Okay, so now we have this. And the last thing is we wanna bring our hatch back to where it was. So what I will do here is go to isolate by right clicking, and then I'll choose end object isolation, and we have our hatch back. The last roof style that I wanna show you is the one that's called the mansard roof. Now I was looking at it online. There are multiple names for this one. I think it goes by Dutch as well. But anyway, the process for creating it is not that hard. Essentially, it's a copy of the hip roof. So we can copy this one like this. And then what you're gonna do is essentially, I will do a rectangle from the middle right here. I'll also hide the hatch and isolate it so that way it's not in the way. So we can easily trim and do everything. And then what I will do is move this down, move this down, or to the right in this, uh, in this scenario, this one to the left, this one will go down. And then what I will do is I will use the trim command and then like this, and trim this portion and then we're gonna delete this and then here we're gonna just place this a little bit here and then finally we'll just add a polyline and then because we want to show that this portion is also sloped we will also copy it and then we will copy this one you can always mirror if you want uh, the mirror command sometimes the text also gets mirrored so it just depends on the settings in your autocad how it will come up and then the final step is essentially to end the object uh, isolation. If this video helped you today, please consider liking and subscribing. And if not, please leave me a question or a comment in the comment section because I really try to bring value to you and keep making my videos better. Thank you for watching.